number 197 tells us that a point on the edge of a fan blade that is rotating in a plane is 10 centimeters from the center of the fan. So if this is the center of the fan, then the radius is 10 centimeters. What is the distance traveled in centimeters by this point in 15 seconds? Um, when the fan runs at a rate 300 revolutions per minute. Well, since we're looking for 15 seconds, we need to convert this rate into 15 seconds. Well, a minute is going to be 60 seconds, and that goes into 15 seconds four times. So 15 seconds, the rate would be 300 divided by 4. Uh, Seventy-five. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so 75 revolutions per 15 seconds. So we need to figure out um, We need to figure out the distance Traveled by this fan blade Around how many rotations it makes and the distance that it goes all around in 15 seconds So what we know here is that in 15 seconds. It's it turns around 75 times it makes 75 revolutions so how do we find the distance of the outside? Well, that's going to be the circumference. And the circumference is going to be 2 pi r. The, if, if r is going to be 10 centimeters, then the circumference is going to be 20 pi. And we know that it makes 75 revolutions, so 75 times 20 is going to be 1,500 pi. So 75 times 20 pi is going to be 1,500 pi. And that is answer B. 198. If n equals 4p, where p is a prime number that's greater than 2, how many different positive even divisors does n have, including n? OK. This is a question testing you on your knowledge of prime numbers. You know that prime numbers, uh, there's only one even prime number, and that's 2. Anything above 2 is going to be odd. So what they're telling you here with this greater than 2 is that whatever p is, it's actually it's going to be odd. So what we can do is we can kind of um, figure out the lowest factors here. And we get 2, and we get 2, and we get p, which we know is odd. So whatever the answer is here, um, in terms of the how many different positive even divisors there are, um, we know that 2 is going to be one of them, and we know that 4 is going to be one of them. What else could be a, an even divisor? Well, 2 times p, so 2p, that would be 1, and so would 4p. So we have 2, we have 4, we have 2p, and we have 4p. And these are going to be your 4 even divisors, and 4 is going to be answer c. Now. I know this can be a little confusing because I went kind of fast, so let me um, show you an example. So let's pretend that p was 3. We can also try it with p is 5. So these are two examples of prime numbers that p could be. So 4p would then be 12, and if we use the 5 example, then 4p would be uh, 20. Well, how many different even divisors are there? Well, there's... Uh, Let's see, 3, 4, which is 2, and a 2, right? So what are the, the four different even divisors? Well, there's 2 times 6 equals 12. Uh, 4 times uh, 3 equals 12. So we have 2 right there. We have 6 times 2 equals 12. We have the 6. And we have 12 times 1 equals 12. So there we have our 4. Uh, the same goes in this example. 4p equals 20. Um, if we look at 20, we could have 2 as a divisor. We could have 4 as, as a divisor. We could also, also have 10 as a divisor. And we could also have uh, 20 as a divisor. So again, we have 4 even divisors. So yeah. I used p because it was a little, little bit more abstract because I didn't want to pick actual numbers. But as you can see, if um, your mind doesn't work that way, you can always just pick a prime number and plug it in. 
and figure out what the answer is. 199 uh, gives us three data sets. So here are the three data sets. 70, uh, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. And we have 74, 74, and finally 62, 74, uh, 74, 74, and 89. Let me erase this. Okay, so we have these data sets, 1, 2, and 3. And they're saying we want to order them from greatest standard deviation to least standard deviation. The way you can think about this is um, standard deviation is um, how far apart the numbers are. So how how did how much did they deviate from whatever is in the middle? Well, obviously this one has the greatest standard deviation because it goes all the way from 62 to 89. So the samples, um, you know, they're kind of all over the place. This is going to be your second um, second on the list, and this one just every every number is the same, so there is no deviation at all. I mean, everything's 74. So it's going to be 3, 1, and 2. 3, 1, and 2 is answer D. 200 says, of the 50 researchers in a work group, 40% will be assigned to team A and the remaining 60% to team B. However, 70% of the researchers prefer team A and 30% prefer team B. What is the lowest possible number of researchers who will not be assigned to the team they prefer? So this is going to be a uh, sets question. So we have team A and we have team B. We also have um, people who love A and the people who love B. So let's set this up and see what we get. All right, what do we have? Well, they tell us here that there are 50 researchers, so there are a total of 50 people. And we know that 40% of them will be assigned to Team A and the remaining 60% to Team B. So 40% to A and 60% to B. What's 40% of 50? 20. And what's 60% of 50? 30. Okay, what else do they tell us? Um, they tell us that 70% of the researchers actually prefer Team A. So 70% love A and 30% prefer Team B. So what's 70% of 50? Well, that's going to be 35 and 15. And we want to know what is the lowest possible number of researchers who will not be assigned to the team that they prefer. So we are going to be looking to, we're going to be looking for this box and this box, and we're going to try to get those numbers as low as possible. Okay, the way we'll, we'll handle this is by looking at these numbers and doing some Sudoku, basically, and, and figuring out like where they meet and um, what the minimum values have to be. So let's start with, why don't we start with this box here, the 30 and a 15. Let's see, could this be a 15? Yes, I think it's actually limited by 15 because um, we can't go any higher than 15 because the total is going to be 15 people. So this is 15, and this can actually be zero. There could actually be zero people on Team A who um, actually love Team B. If that's the case, then this would be 20. 35 minus 20 is going to be 15 also. 15 plus 15 is 30, so everything checks out. You know, this little, little logic game here works. So if that's the case, then the answer would be 15, because 15 plus 0 is going to be 15. And looking at the answer choices, that's going to be uh, answer choice A. We don't even have to go any further, because 15 is the smallest answer um, out of the five given. And then we're looking for the minimum, lowest possible number. So there's nothing lower than A. So and A is the right answer. 201. If m is the average arithmetic mean of the first 10 positive multiples of 5, so um, m is mean, 
and and then uppercase M is median of okay and they're asking us what is uppercase M minus lowercase m and the numbers we're given are the 10 positive multiples of 5 so 5 uh, 10 15 20 25 30 35 40 45 and 50 so let's figure out the mean first well the mean is going to be all these added up divided by 10 right well, the trick to figure out the mean is to take the two middle numbers and uh, and then well in this case since there's a deviation of five you know every in terms of how the set is set up um, between each number is five there are five numbers between or five values within each between each number um, and they're all separated by that value so um, the mean is going to be 25 plus 30 divided by 2 and that would be 27.5 um, coincidentally median is also going to be the exact same thing so m uppercase m minus lowercase m that's really just going to be 27.5 minus 27.5 that's going to be 0 and 0 is answer choice b if you really wanted to add all this stuff together what you would end up getting is 275 over 10 which is going to be 27.5 anyway so being able to identify that this is what you can do when all the numbers um, are apart by the same value uh, is going to save you a lot of time on the actual test 202 okay let's look at 202 it says if m is greater than 0 and x is m percent of y and in terms of m y is what percent of x uh, tricky tricky the key to solving this problem is to just make sure that you know how to set up your ratios so the first thing they told us is that x is m percent of y right so set up ratio x over y equals m over 100 um, then what you get is x equals y m over 100 okay so far so good they also tell us that we are looking for x is what percent of or y is what percent of x so basically y over x equals what percent of 100 right so then you just cross multiply and you get 100 y over x is what we're looking for okay if this is what we're looking for why don't we just plug this x into it and then figure out what the answer is okay let's do that so if we plug x uh, into the denominator we get 100 y over y m over 100 that's going to be the same as 100 y over 1 times 100 over y m which is equal to this Cancel out the y's, and the answer we are left with is 10,000 over m, and that is e. Let's see if I have time to do number 203. Um, I could probably do it. Let's do it very quickly. 203 says, what is the 25th digit to the right of the decimal power, decimal point in the decimal form of 6 over 11. Well, let's do the multiplication and see what we get. It's going to be 5 to get us 55. 50. 4 is going to get us 44. 60. And then it just keeps repeating. What we notice here is that all the odd numbers are going to be 5 and all the evens are going to be 4. So if we're looking for the 25th digit. We know that it's going to be an odd, so it's going to be a 5. So 5 is going to be your answer, and that is C.